so we are here to do a helicopter animation. So um, if you download the pack that is provided, uh, you will have this map with a helicopter, a bullet system already done for you, and some other stuff. So if you go into this map, uh, you should have something like this, and it will look similar to this. You probably won't have this, but um, it should look something like this. There might be some fluting items over here, which I suggest you delete because you are using a helicopter. So if you decide to go further than what the uh, cliffs reach, then you'll see floating stuff, which kind of breaks the immersion. So I would suggest not doing that. But uh, okay, so first thing you wanna do is kind of prep your scene. So I would go in and uh, go in and find a spot that's flat to make your life easy. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I decided to make a film right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab this, press W, press Alt, and move it around down here into the water. Just uh, try and mold it to make it look natural. And uh, something like this. Okay, so now we have this nice, uh, is this flat? It's not flat, okay. So I'm going to find a one that is flat because you wanna make this as easy as possible for you. So I'm gonna use this one. Oh. Alt, move, down, and then right here. So once you have your spot that you wanna do, you can now um, start with the project. So what you do first is you should open it up and you should have these folders, except video. Uh, you can delete that for right now. Well, you won't have one, but yeah. Uh, so first we're gonna drag in our helicopter by going to Vigilante Cap, Vehicles, and then West Helicopter. I suggest using the Blueprint class. Uh, it might take a second to load the shaders, so um, at this point, I'm just gonna hit a quick save because it's always nice to save when you're doing this stuff. So other, other than that, you also wanna go to content and then guy, and then you should grab this guy right here, the seating animation. So you can have a guy that's going to be sitting down and uh, you wanna go to bullets and click, uh, dr click and drag out fixed. So that should be all the things we need. We might wanna make a second guy, but that's up to you. Um, yep, that's, that's all we need for right now. So what we need to do is now uh, control space, open, and we'll make a new folder and we will call it video. And since we're using this one and we're gonna be using it in a little bit, uh, I'd suggest setting the color, which is right click, set color, uh, make a new color, I don't know, make it red, there. Now we have a color for it. We open, we should open it by double clicking on it and then going to cinematics and then level sequence. So I'm gonna just call it heli underscore animation. And there, now we're in helicopter animation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one step at a time. So first I'm going to add in my helicopter by either dragging and dropping it in or clicking add, add to sequencer and add right here. I can show you this real quick. Make sure you have the helicopter selected, go to here and then just click add, add to sequencer. And now you have the helicopter in sequencer. So what now I'm gonna do is you see that the tail is like sticking out at the back. I'm just gonna lower it down to where I like it, right there, so it looks good. Uh, it's a little bit clipping, so, oh, we should just move it down a bit. So that's there, and move this up a bit. And like that, okay, that's good with me. So um, once you've done this, you can just press S and um, if you're having trouble moving the objects, I suggest turning up off the snap tools up here, the rotation and the uh, movement. That makes it way easier to move things without it snapping too much. Or you can lower the snap things right here. So snap sizes, you can move it to five or you can make it uh, divisions of 60, 360. But um, so once you are in a happy state or what you like for what it to look like on the start starting uh, point, I suggest pressing S while having it selected and it will put out a transformation mark. And this will save its location and everything about it so far that we've been doing. So now we're gonna prep the sequencer for our stuff. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on this FPS and move it down to 24 because it looks very smooth as 24 and then show time as seconds. So you can actually get a very nice animation. So I'm gonna make maybe a 20 second animation um, the longer you make it, the more time for like exporting. Uh, so like my computer can handle like a minute. So I might just do a minute. I'll just do a minute. Okay. 
around them. This is how long the animation I'm going to be. Uh, I suggest find a target you want to blow up or like move. I say I want to blow up this windmill right here. So that is going to be my scenes target. So um, once I found that, I'm going to now move in these two guys. Actually, I'm going to delete this guy real quick. Um, I'm going to add this guy in and now he is in the sequencer. Now you can just click plus track attach, attach to heli and attach it to the root. Um, this makes it so that the guy is forever attached to it as long as this thing right down here, the brown thing uh, attached root is fully stretched out for the entire sequencer. So this is on the green zero zero mark to the 55 second mark or 54 seconds, sorry. Um, of how long I want the animation to go on for. So uh, you notice that the guy's actually not like in the helicopter. If you press, if you select him and press F, oh, select him and press F, he's over here. So the reason why he goes over here is that's just Unreal Engine uh, making up for uh, location when you attach him. So the easiest uh, thing to do um, is to reset his location to zero, zero, because it makes his world location that it should be at zero zero on the, where the helicopter is. So this makes it really nice to uh, make a stationary, uh, I'm just gonna do negative 90 real quick. Uh, it makes it really easy for uh, you to say, put a guy in its helicopter if you have it selected on its route. So if I just go over here and slow down my camera by clicking, right clicking and using the scroll wheel to go slower, I can just go in and just move him up a bit to the side and uh, I am, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, so if you wanted a second guy, like in the back, because there's two seats, you can just go click duplicate, click yes. Now you have two, and then you just move him back and up until you're happy with that. Okay, so now those two guys are good done. Um, to keep things like organized, I'm gonna add a folder by clicking add and then add folder, and then I'm gonna name it something if it lets me. Okay, it's not gonna let me. Oh, now it's letting me. Okay, I'm going to just call it guys with a two and then I'm going to click and shift and then click select both of them and then drag click and move them into the folder. So it's now in the folder. Um, okay, so that guy is now attached. Now we're going to move on to the gun system that we have. Um, we're going to do the same guy with the, the thing with we did to the guys except uh, we're going to go click add, attach and then heli and then we're going to select it on the gun tilt right here so what that does is it makes sure that the bullets are always attached to the gun and so if this gun moves right here the bullets will move with it so um, make sure you have it dragged out to your red uh, line and your green line and you will have a bullet system that will always follow where it's supposed to go okay so now that we have that um, we can now start prepping the helicopter. I'm also gonna move the gun into with the guys folder as well, uh, just so we don't have to worry about it for right now. Um, but you can leave it out if you want. So once we have the helicopter and we have everything else ready and prepped, we can actually start moving the pre-made uh, anime, uh, anime animations in the uh, helicopter itself. So this helicopter comes with a lot of settings you can adjust to make stuff start moving. So the first thing I'm gonna do is you're gonna click plus and then you're gonna go down to skeletal mesh right here. And then once you have skeletal mesh, you can click plus and go down to anime instance, which should be right here, West Helicopter HD 64D. And then once you have that, now you have access to a ton of settings that come pre-installed. So if you want the door angle, say, if you want the door angle at 100, uh, and you click enter, and then it will always be at 100 now. Oh, oh, I think it's because I put it right there. Yeah, I did. Um, okay, so um, you're probably thinking right now, that's the setting is put on 100, and it's not actually showing up on my viewport. So what you actually have to do is you have to come up to here, you have to click uh, this three uh, dot line, and then click simulate and this is the doors right here. So this is actually the door, but since it's 100, uh, it kind of looks a little weird. So yeah, um, maybe don't do 100. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it at negative 100 right at the beginning. And then when we take off around five seconds, I'm going to have it shut, so put it at zero, and then bam. So if you simulate that, that's how it looks. Pretty cool. But um, so that's just one setting. We're going to actually get to the main part. Let's start with um, main rotor speed. And uh, let's at zero, zero, or we just go to here and we click zero. Uh, you can just make it so that it starts off at zero speed and then at five seconds I found that like right around 300 speed is a good. Oh, okay. Remember to um, Click stop simulating uh, When you're doing this, it's good to do it when you're uh, going back to make sure everything looks nice But if you have simulation going and you add something to the viewport like if you go into here and bring in a guy while simulating and just Do start doing stuff. It won't actually like work because you're simulating it at the time so if you bring something in while simulating stuff uh it breaks a bunch of stuff like the thing you brought in won't do it and then you do a bunch of work with it and then you click stop simulate and it's actually no longer there so don't do that um so at 300 i say is a good speed and then at 15 seconds i want it to increase to around 800 is a good speed so it's always going to be increasing speed pretty much the entire video for 15 seconds and uh, it will be at a constant speed at 800 then. So uh, we should be good with that. Um, we, we can just set the rotor tail speed the same. Uh, we can go click on here, it's at zero. Click, click here, make it 300, click enter, it'll make it 300, and click here, click 800. So it's going always at the constant speed. I am not a helicopter uh, you know, pilot, so I actually don't know the angles that it's supposed to be turning to go up and down, uh, or the rotor angles to turn right and left, but you can adjust those if you want by clicking this and then rotor tail flap angle and motor flap angle. Um, I don't really know this, so I'm just going to keep it straight for right now. I mean, you can, let's simulate it and you can look at it. It looks like this versus this like that. Uh, I think this is up and this is down. So I'm going to go 40 and I'll just, I'll just make it 40 the entire thing. And I'll do the same thing with the rotatorial flaps as well. Uh, 40. Okay. I think this is for, well, the rotor tail is obviously for turning and stability, but so I don't know. I think I'll just keep it zero for right now. Uh, so I'm not going to edit that too much because I'm not very good with that. So I'm going to click stop simulating and, um, okay. So now let's get into actually moving the helicopter because, uh, this is probably the most important part. So at second zero, you have nothing done. So at second five, we want to be lifting or starting to lift off. So we're gaining power for five seconds with 300 speed on the rotor tail blades, I want it to start going up. So at s right here, I want to click enter for, or S to get it, that's a shortcut. Um, and then at 10 seconds, I want it to be off the ground. So let's say I want it to here, and then I want it a bit forward. So I want it like that. So I want it going like that and up. Okay, and at the 15 second mark, I want it to be going towards our target, which is the windmill. So I want it to be going and starting to move. Rotate it down, go up, and click enter. Okay, let's let's watch this. Uh, oh, remember to save. So I'm just going to save this, and then we'll simulate it. And this is what it looks like so far. That's that's pretty smooth. I think. So that gets pretty close to the bar. So maybe at like the 22 second mark, let's stop. Oh, let's stop simulating. And then we'll go up, over, and up. And go right about here. That's a decent distance for five seconds. And. Okay. And now, okay. So I wanted to go up a bunch and I want it to go right here and I want to do a sick turn because those are kind of fun to do sometimes. So just like that, like that and oh sorry gotta move it on the track first before moving it. Go right here, here and here. 
but you're probably like, oh, the rotation looks terrible. Like you just you're just like rotating to the side. So what you can do is while you're doing this, since Unreal is such a, a nice tool to work with sometimes, is if you click on the rotation thing by opening this up, transform, rotation, go to the rotation tab right here, you can have it starting to rotate even before. And right now I know it looks pretty slow, so I'm gonna speed it up, but don't worry. Um, so I'm just gonna, oh, it's going right here, and then it goes back to here, so I'm just gonna delete this. So it's constantly going like that, and then I'm gonna rotate it fully when it gets to here. So I'm just gonna go Ooh. Throw at the back, level it off. Uh, you can also, use, if you want to add zero zero, you can just add it right there. So there, I'm happy with that. And then it like throws at the side. I say that's that's pretty realistic. So let's make this speed this up by putting the things closer together, because like who wants a really slow helicopter? Like come on, if you got a helicopter, you got to be moving fast a little bit. So uh, let's go right here and like that and then bam uh that's still pretty slow i'm gonna move it like there and okay that's really slow whoa right about there and oh i'm happy with that okay so this is what we have so far um you'll notice that our cannon isn't actually like angled to where we want to shoot such as the window or the windmill uh, so what we're actually gonna do is what we're gonna do now is I mean uh, we're going to uh, go close trans the form tool because we don't need that anymore and then we're gonna go right here to where we oh we get there at 22 seconds so at 22 seconds we want to click plus here and then we want to go to uh, turret elevation is up and down and then turret angle oh turret angle is probably what we want to affect uh, we click simulate and then we want to go down to turret angle move it left and right okay so let's try and get it to actually hit the uh, windmill uh, right right about there okay so I like that so I'm just gonna save that by clicking enter or s uh, oh wait, S might not work here because that is only for the transform tool. So do not click S right now. Um, I might have to go fix that in a second so if that's a problem. So click right this here. Um, I don't really like how it's tilted the entire time. So I'm just going to put zero here and then click enter or this button right here, the keystroke. So uh, at 22 seconds, it starts to move with it. We can watch this happen. Because it doesn't really move much, but it's it is a bit noticeable. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's cool. It like slides in and then rotates. That's a good gunner. Okay, uh, I like that. And then let's let's get it to not shoot right there. Let's get the angle to go down a bit. Oh, that's going up. Let's go right here. That's a pretty good spot. Um, let's go back a bit. Make that zero, and then there. Okay, so we are up. We are there. Now we are shooting. And we start, we want to start shooting at around maybe 23 seconds. Uh, we want to start shooting here. Okay, so now that we're happy with that, we're going to click on this, the folder, drop down, bring the fixed out of the folder, the bullets. So the bullets now have to do stuff. So now we're going to click here and then click plus and we're going to go to Niagara component. And now we have Niagara component, we can do FX toggle track and we can start doing this stuff. Um, there's a more efficient way to do it, but uh, I haven't learned it yet, so um, we're just going to use this for now, right now. So, uh, we want it to shoot for maybe about 5 seconds. Yeah, I'm good with 5 seconds. It shoots for 5 seconds, that's enough bullets for me, and then it stops shooting. So, we want to click, uh, oh, I should probably show you how to do that, sorry, I went really too fast. So, once you have Niagara Component, FX Studio, you want to start, or not FX Syst Studio, FX System, you want to go to where you want to start shooting, which is around the 23 mark. For me, I'm going to click Activate, and then I'm going to click Keystroke, or Enter, right here, the Add New Key button. I want it to shoot for about five seconds, so I'm going to drag and drop it five seconds later down the track, and I'm going to click Deactivate on this drop-down menu, and it will automatically do that for you. So 
Now you also want to go in front of it because it will constantly be active since it doesn't have a deactivate button uh, before. So I'm going to deactivate it right before the system. If you zoom in by using this thing right here, you can show, see that it's constantly deactivated. Uh, just to make sure it's deactivated, I do like to go like right here and like outside of the track so it constantly knows it's supposed to be deactivated because I've had problems where it just activates when it wants to sometimes and that's kind of annoying. So uh, it shoots for this five seconds and then if you look right here, it stops. Okay, so make sure you're not constantly simulating like me. I got lucky right here and all my work saved. But um, so, okay, that looks nice. We're happy with it. That's good. Oh. Do K Control Z to undo because uh, I just moved uh, two of the guys' tracks, which is the attached tool. So they was, that would have messed up these two guys in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to say the gun system's done. Like you don't need to do anything more with it. So you can now just throw it back in the folder. So we're gonna open up the helicopter thing again, and we're gonna go to right here, and we can put in a, a machine gun FX, which is already built onto the track, and we're gonna do the same thing with the FXL or FX toggle track. So we're going to go and click right here and uh, right about here we, when we want to activate you and when we want to finish is right here. So we're doing the same thing but for this FX uh, machine gun truck. Uh, we'll do the same thing by dragging it out over here. Go to here and say deactivate and go over here and say deactivate and go over here and say deactivate. So it's deactivated and it only turn on to do that. So what that does is it makes this really cool effect which is a PNG while your gun's shooting. So it shoots out bullets and our bullets actually come out. So that's what we want. It's there and now we're done. If you want to do a damage sequence it's also in here as well. Okay I'm just going to close that so we have more room. If you click on this and plus, there's a damage and smoke thing that will put on smoke through the propellers and the damage thing will add a damage texture, I'm pretty sure, to the helicopter. I haven't really played around with it too much, but it's at your discretion if you want to do it like that. I'm just going to show you the basics, which is bullets, flying around, moving, stopping, and stuff like that. So. Uh, now that we have a target, let's say we want this actually target to blow up or move or stuff like that. So we're just going to simulate it real quick to see where it's shooting. So it's shooting right there. So we're going to stop simulating. And this part's really important to stop simulating because we're actually going to add something new. So we're going to go to starter content and then particles and then explosion. And we're going to put it like right where we thought we saw it. And we're going to pump that up a bit. 65, 6.5. Uh, I'm good with that. And then we're just going to add it to the track explosion. We're going to close the helicopter so we have an easier time. We want it to explode at 25 seconds because that's in between our guns and it should be still firing. So we're going to tell it to activate right here. And then we're going to tell it to deactivate. So once it activates, we no longer want it doing anything. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do deactivate. And we're going to do deactivate over here. Oh, that's pretty small explosion, but okay. Um, boom. Um, let's make it 10. Go big or go home. There. So that's an explosion, and then we want this to start falling after the explosion. So we click on the windmill, we click add, we click add to sequencer right here. If you don't do a windmill and you don't want things to fall over, this is a lot easier if you do a pipe and you just have it explode and then just put fire afterwards and you don't have to do anything. <laughs> but I'm just making this interesting. So for me, um, okay. So we want it to start falling over like that. And then we'll move it down the track. We'll go right here, boom. Uh, enter, and then right after that, we want it to like flatten out and go down. And then uh, we also want its movement. So right here, it's starting to clip into its system. So we, want, we don't want that. Uh, we'll go up a little bit. And then we'll go down a more, and then enter, and go right here, and go up a bit, and then we'll go down. And this will make sure make sure you're clicking on this while you're doing it, otherwise it won't override it, and you'll just have a choppy animation. So it'll look something like this. Ooh. Okay, that's a little slow right there. That's why we're going to increase it. But now we got the settings right, so we want we got it to finish properly. So. Do we like this part? Yeah, it starts slowly and then increases speed. That I like that. 
Um, okay, that's way too fa uh, slow. So I'm going to zoom in more so we can get it faster. So I'm going to go like right here. Bam. Okay. Um, should I just delete that? Honestly, probably. Yeah, that looks better. And then we can just like move that closer. <laughs> okay. So at the 32 mark, let's say since this is a windmill, we expect electricity, right? So, um, oh, there's like a line here, power line. We'll just delete that. <laughs> we don't need it. Who's going to know it was there unless, you know, it's already deleted. So, okay. So make sure let's, let's bring in sparks from the basic pack as well. And then, um, let's just put that on. Should we put it on top? I don't know. There's a cable right here. Let's put it on the cable. And does that look good? Should we make it bigger? Probably not. Okay. Let's do like one one and then let's make this bigger and then let's make that bigger just the z-axis so it should look nicer on the z-axis okay so something like that and we'll just add it to the track and we'll make sure we'll do same thing fx travel toggle track activate it activate it right here and then deactivate it Actually, no, it can activate for the rest of the sequence. I'm actually only going to do it for about 35 seconds for the sequence because I actually didn't use all the time, which is good because uh, we don't want to be doing too much with this because that will increase our render times. <laughs> so uh, make sure it's deactivated. OK, so that's, that's the important parts done. We have an animation. We have all the settings done. We have the FX travel tack on, the helicopter's moving, and um, we're happy with it. So once we're happy with all the animation parts, let's do the hard part, which is the camera. I'm joking. It's the most easy part. It's it's pretty simple. So let's go to zero zero uh, right here. This is all personal preference, really. So I like to make like a scene where, hey, uh, this is a helicopter. Let's do a pan view. So uh, like this. So I'm pressing S by the way when you decide to you like the camera view um, so let's watch this spin 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 okay that's pretty choppy maybe if I right click and make it into linear that might be smoother yeah okay let's add some natural camera shake uh, actually wait I'm not gonna do this very very fancy but uh, there and then click on this and we'll make this like over here just slight camera shit to try and give the illusion that it is oh I didn't save it <laughs> okay well let's just continue <laughs> don't don't mind that okay so that's camera one we're done with camera one that's just a pan shot uh, let's click and make a new camera and this camera we're gonna do plus attach and attach it to the helicopter's root. And we're like, oh no, it went in the middle of nowhere. Same thing as before, just change the location back to right here, reset it, and now it's in the floor because it's at its root. So we wanna reset its rotation as well, move over, and this will constantly be attached to the helicopter. So about three seconds in, we can, uh, it will move with the helicopter. So it'll look like something like this. So it's all constantly gonna be going up with the helicopter, which is really nice. Um, let's, let's make this like right here as well. Oh, okay. I don't really like that, that it's not actually looking at the helicopter. So I'm going to bring it down and it'll look something like this. So like that camera. Uh, okay. So that's camera one. You can do a bunch of stuff with attachments actually. So what another thing you can do is you can make another camera. Oh, that's exporting. Don't do that yet. You can do camera, create a new camera, camera three, and then you can be um, on it for the entire time. So I'm going to say like right at the 15 second mark, we want it to stop. And we're going to do attach, and we're going to attach it to the two guys that are in the thing. And we can just attach it to, um, I don't know, is it has does it have a root? No, it doesn't. Okay, attach it to, it's, uh, you can attach it to its hips. So if you go right here, right here, and then, oh. Okay, 
its hips were a bad idea. Let's just attach it to the helicopter because that's easier. So go plus, attach, attach it to the helicopter, attach it to its root. You can reset both of the stuff and then go up and into the cockpit and uh, right here. Again, something like this. And you can just click enter. And you can look at like the side view, like the camera. The aperture is making it really, really weird. Okay, there. That looks a little better. Um, like that, so there. Now we have a, a camera shot inside the helicopter, which is kind of cool. Um, I think that's enough of the inside because uh, I don't really like working with the inside. But what I do like is attaching it to the root and then looking at the gun. Because if you do that, then it looks really nice. And where is it? It's right here. So you can have it attached to the weapon like this and say like enter and then move forward. And we can go like over side the gun like this. Oh, that's spinning way too much. Okay, so don't add too much spin because you don't want people sick. Maybe does it go out, going an out shot, yeah. And then it starts shooting. Bam, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> okay. And then just make sure you look. You can like go and look at your target as well. You can go up and over. Oh yeah. Don't make sure you miss the falling of your actual thing. And go right there. And then pan over like that. And then boom. You see the explosion. It starts to go down. And oh, okay. Pause. Pause. Let's let's go over and look at it. Make sure you, they actually see your work. So that bottom part looks bad. Like this right here kind of looks bad. So I'm just going to make it so it, you actually don't even see it. <laughs> so like there, bam, it falls over, boom. And you see the lightning. So you could have spent a lot more time, or I could have spent a lot more time on this windmill. I just tried to be quick with it just so you can get a nice uh, animation done as fast as possible. So let's speed this up a little bit. And so it looks like this, boom. Woo, and then kaput. Okay, well what if I make those all into linear? Okay, we, should, we could have spent a lot more time on that, but okay. That is good enough for right now. Um, I'm going to move this down to the 35 mark. So we're actually only exporting like 30 seconds of it or 35 seconds of it. Uh, so now let's do camera work. So what I found really easy is if you just hover over right here, you can just know where the camera is. So the actor is only moving for this amount of time. So it'll tell you you're only moving for this amount of time. So you can assume that you can only need to drag the camera cut to where the cursor is. So just have the cursor hover where you want it to be. So second one camera goes until here, which I don't know if I like, but, uh, oh. Okay. Oh yeah, you're supposed to keep it on this until you're happy with the, where it begins and then move it over and then there. And then you, the third one starts here. So you want to switch cameras here. So you just go back to here, add the third camera scroll down and be like, oh, you want it to start from here and to go to there. So scroll in there, click plus, click actor four, and we didn't, we don't have an actor five, so we can just run through that. So let's watch this from start to beginning. And it'll look like this, look like this. The pan up goes like that, and then switches to inside, switches to the outside, and we pan over and we see it explode, bam. That is uh, good for me, good enough for me. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm just gonna, no, I'm gonna save before I start doing the export stuff. So once you're happy with your camera, your actor, your scene, everything's good, 
uh, everything's going good, you can start rendering it out. So instead of like rendering it out as an EXR image file sequence, um, I find that this is the old legacy version. So this might not even pop up for you. I'm in 5.1, 4.1, to get the what professionals use, at least from my understanding, is EXR files. So EXR files are really good for After Effects and uh, to put stuff in post-processing and to see uh, all this stuff happening in your scene in a different light. Um, so when you export stuff, I suggest going to pub plugins and typing in movie render queue. Turn this on, restart. I already have it on, so I'm not going to turn it on. Um, but if you have it on, you can just click this, and then you should say Movie Render Queue. And then just click that. And you'll be like, oh, there's two here. That doesn't seem normal. That's because it isn't. That shouldn't pop on yours. <laughs> um, so if you just go to Video, whatever you called your level sequence should be what pops up in the level renderer. So I am going to delete this because I don't actually have a heli level sequence. I only have a heli underscore animation. So there's a ton of settings you can put for this. There's actually so many it's not even funny. So what I'm going to do, and to save you a ton of time, is what I'm going to do is you just go up, click this right here, unsave config, go right here go to down here and I'm gonna give you a mega preset. So yes, import this and preset. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna use EXR files. It's going to use deferred rendering, which is pretty normal. Uh, it's, it's gonna use anti-aliene. Uh, so, an analyzing, sorry, I can't speak today. <laughs> um, so what usually, this will takes a really long time and 16 console variables, which I typed out by hand and uh, Actually, we don't use this one because this one's a not 5.4. So um, the biggest time consumer of this is anti-aliens. So the bigger the number and the bigger the number on the top and bottom, this will increase your level time from a 20-minute render to a 3-hour render to a 6-hour render to like a 10-hour render. So I find the best results you want to do 36 and 6 but that's like a three hour render on a high end system. For a 35 second clip, that's not really worth it. So what I'm gonna do is what you should do, and it should automatically have it, because I'm gonna save this as a preset. It should be one to two. Oh, um, uh, yeah. It may produce undesirable <laughs> results, okay. It needs eight samples, so two to eight, sorry, okay. Uh, this should mean that every single uh, frame in your sequence will be rendered twice or subsampled twice. So we'll go through it eight times. So um, it, that's a lot when you're doing it twice, and that's a ton when you're doing it 36 times with eight. That's almost a thousand frames for a 35 second video. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to click accept. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna click output. So where do you wanna put this? I have a movie render queue. It already has a folder for it. But if you have something say like Google Drive, you can put it on Google Drive. Just make a folder for it and call it like, uh, I don't know, new render shortcut and call it like uh, EXR underscore files. Whatever you wanna call it, doesn't really matter as long as you can find where it's located. So as long as you know where it is, and you won't run out of space because you don't want to do this render again. Um, yeah, I'm going to put in the EXR files right there. Uh, did it accept it? No. Okay, well, it's going to movie renders. I'm fine with that. Um, I'm just going to click render local. Oh, I should probably save this preset. Save as a queue. Uh, wait, no. Go up here. Do this. Save as a preset. Uh, save as a preset, and we're going to call it um, preset uh, underscore main. Uh, I'm just going to do this for you. Uh, so you can make it like a 1080p or 19 by 20 by 1080p, and this should all be fine. It should already be 24 frames because you're actually already doing that. And uh, yep, yeah, that should be good. I'm going to click accept. And then what you're going to do is you're going to click render local. Um, so once you do this, it should take 20 minutes. It, I don't know how long it'll take. But um, once it's done, 
it sh you can just go to click to your search bar and type in After Effects. So I'm going to use After Effects for this video because uh, I have it. Uh, you can use other software like um, DaVinci Resolve and uh, Premiere Pro, but to use EXRs to their best of their ability, After Effects is usually the best one. So I'm just going to click a new project, new composition, and I already have stuff rendered out. So you're probably thinking, oh, my stuff's still rendering. This is a different animation that I already did, so I already have EXR files. So once you're in After Effects, you can click New Composition from Footage. Click here. You can click Open an EXR file. Uh, have this checked. And then just click Import. And wow, that looks pretty ugly is probably what you're saying. That's because it doesn't have the right settings on it right now. So what you want to do is you want to go to over to Effects and Present. You want to type in uh, Extractor, the EXT, and then just go down to 3D Channels Extractor. It should be there. And whoa, that just looks so much better now. <laughs> so it might look like it's lagging right now. Uh, that's because uh, it's not actually in its right frame count right now. And also After Effects, uh, you have to like load everything out. So this like right, green line right here shows it has to be loaded like a YouTube video. So if it's like kind of choppy, that's because it's not completely loaded. Like look at that. Now it's smooth uh, that I loaded it all out but it's just After Effects being After Effects. So what you can do now in After Effects, what I also like is you can click on it and you can press Control D to make another one and you can change the mode. And it should, in theory, uh, yeah. It should, in theory, uh, allow you to make modes. So if you do this, you can do normal, you can make this uh, overlay or multiply. You can do dark, linear, and just go through the modes if you want to try them out. I think if you press that, oh, divide does not look good. Difference doesn't look good. I'm going to put this on normal and normal because I don't really want to play around with it. But that's just something you can check out. Um, so what you need to do now is render it out. So if you go to composition, oh, sorry, uh, it should be under edit. Is it composition? Yeah, composition, and then add render queue. And it should open this, and all you have to do is go to settings and make sure that you're using actually 24 frames per second because that's what you have in Unreal. Um, so once you have that, uh, you can click on this and you can try and use any other one that you want to use. But HD46 works with Premiere Pro. Uh, I don't think it use, works with YouTube, but it works with a lot of different uh, editing softwares. So. Let's, I'm just going to use H249 or 94. Um, so I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to, uh, you have to decide where you want to put it and name it. So you can name it something. I'm going to put it in After Effect Renders because I already have like three of them. I've done this a few times. So I'm just going to call this uh, EXM1. And then I'm just going to click Render. And then once it's rendering out, uh, just make sure you know where it is. I know where my stuff is. Uh, this process is pretty simple now. Now you just have to put sound effects on it. So if you go to Premiere Pro, DaVinci, Resolve, uh, whatever you want, I'm going to close this, save it. Just put it in files. Oh, I already have an untitled project. Okay. Um, let's call this. Oh, let me rename it. Test two. And okay, so now we're in Premiere Pro. We do new project. Uh, let's call it Heli Animation, or just oh, I already have Heli, uh, Heli underscore Animation. Okay, once you're in here, you now just click right click, import, and go down to where your stuff was. So mine's in After Effect Renders, and I'll use Heli Example too. So um, import. I'm going to downloads. I downloaded a bunch of sounds earlier. I can put them in the uh, description or whatever uh, to allow you just use the sounds because they're a pain in the butt to find. So uh, I'm just going to quickly put in stuff. Put in, this is our render, and it explodes. Everything's here. Make sure that everything's here. If not, go back and repeat some of the steps. You might have forgot something. Um, so I'm going to click on this. You just like. Oh, unsupported video compression, what?
Oh, I have sound off. That's probably. I'm gonna turn that up a bit so I can actually. These are explosions. So I have an explosion of mine. So right here, boop boop boop, and explodes. So I say I like this explosion. So I'm just gonna click this, click that, grab the explosion, move it out, and. Um, if you want helicopter like starting up sounds, you can use this one. So, uh, seven seconds of audio should be good. Oh, and then right there should be about, oh, why isn't it letting me? That's my cannon, okay. Uh, my audio it's, it's really weird um, I'll just use this instead right now Huey sounds which should be to right here drag and drop in bam we have Huey sounds and we'll just play that the entire video so if you press play okay let's speed that up a bit Wow, that's really slow. Um, okay, I'll use the end part of the video more. So, uh, I'm not very good with Soundivine, so if you find better audio clips, just use those. Just use, like, go to YouTube, find uh, helicopter videos. Uh, you can just type in um, YouTube to MP4 Converter Wave, and that's a website that usually doesn't give you terrible pop-up ads like other ones. Um, so... Once you're happy with that, like happy with all the sounds, say I'm happy with this, even though I'm not right now, you just click export and uh, you can just put it as place that you want. You can call it whatever. Uh, make sure that you put it as a H24 also works. This works. But make sure that you have your settings. Make it match the source. So it actually looks very nice. Um, and then you just click export and that's done. And that's the video. Uh, good luck trying to do it. And uh, yeah.